martial arts, cane, self-defense techniques, workout, and tutorial. I'm going to talk to you about getting started very quickly with your martial arts cane or your self-defense cane. Start with the cane in one hand. You're going to twist to warm up. I want to get the uh, blood flowing. I want to keep my joints safe from injury. I want you to get lean, strong, healthy, more mobility, more flexibility, more strength, all starting with this simple warm-up technique. So I have the long side coming out of the thumb. The palm is facing the sky. I have a closed and relaxed grip, and I'm just making this cranking motion. Just like I'm cranking something, turning it over, turning it over and over in my hand. That's going to build some callus, some thick skin. It's also going to give you a better feeling for how this moves through space and time. You're going to improve your spatial awareness. You're going to improve everything with this basic spin. So don't skip this part, and then go over and back, side to side, in front of your body. This is gonna force you to get your stomach up and in, your abs tight, pull your chin in a little bit, get the other hand up, increase the speed when you're ready. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, but I also want you to challenge yourself to grow. That means get out of your comfort zone sooner than you're comfortable with, get there a little faster. This is a quick start guide. I want you to know how to use your cane for self-defense very quickly and from the first day that you have it. Now. The other side, palm up, the long side is coming out of the thumb. My hand is closed and relaxed, and I'm making, again, that cranking motion, just going over and over again to the side of my body for about 30 seconds. That's to get the heart rate up a little bit, just a tiny bit at a time. This is gonna lean you out and get you fighting fit faster, and then bring it over and back. We're going for well-being and strength, speed, power, balance, coordination, all of that while you're improving your flexibility and you're getting your stomach tight, improving posture, all of that with a simple motion going side to side. You're simply going down and back. Kind of a sideways eight with your hand back and forth, gradually increasing your speed. Once you've warmed up, put it in the right hand and I'm gonna have you put your right foot forward. You're gonna get in this Protect the position right from the start. Use your verbal command. That means tell them to get out of your face. Back up. I will defend myself. It's my right. Don't come any closer. I'm going to put the cane between you and the threat. The threat's right here. You're able to strike, strike. You're able to bring this in, bring that across the back in this position. So this is your starting position. Put your right foot forward and lift it up. Now, you have two choices. You can step back to make your body a smaller target. And again, to get behind the cane, or you can step forward into that protective position. So if you choose to step back, or you choose to step forward, all you have to remember is keep the cane between you and the threat. So from here, step in with that right, I'm gonna have you bring it back to your shoulder so you can work range of motion, getting stronger. From here, strike through. Now when you strike, you're creating an arc. Think of a semicircle or a half circle coming through with that cane. That's gonna keep that from breaking your stick. From here, and slice through again, reach for it, and imagine this. Do you want them right there in your face or do you wanna keep them at this distance? Arm's length, cane's length. So if you can hit them at this distance for self-defense, you will. You're always going to keep them as far away as possible. You don't know if he has a knife or she has a knife. You're going to get it up in there, and you're, uh, they're too close. You're in trouble. So from here, when you can, as far away as possible. So I want you to practice a bigger motion during your warm-up. So you're bringing it through, and it slices all the way into your body. From here, through and back. Slow at first, gradually increasing your speed. Your power, harder, faster, with more devastation. When you hit, it's going to create either, you're either going to break a bone, their bone for self-defense, or it's going to create some type of pain in the body, intense pain, searing pain. It's going to uh, compress their flesh, meaning it's either going to split open, or you're going to cause a contusion, a big, uh, uh, what do they call it? bruise, a big bruise. But you're coming through here. Imagine they're coming in with that knife. You're just knocking it straight out of there. Or maybe it's their uh, operating system. 
their brain. You're going into the head for self-defense. So I want you to practice that first. And this is gonna to start to get your heart rate up even higher than the beginning. Now, I wanna go into a strengthening exercise. This is how you're gonna get started, right away with your cane. Make sure it's in front of your body. Just put both hands on it. Push your hips behind your knees for a tiny little squat. You only have to go like this much. You just wanna get the blood flowing. You wanna get power in the legs. All that power in the legs is gonna turn into fighting speed and devastation, or devastation. You're gonna have all of the strength coming out of the legs because they're under your body. They're what move you forward, move you side to side, get you out of the way. But all the power and that knockout strength comes through the floor. So we're gonna get the legs stronger and you're using your cane. You're using your cane to go down and up. Thank you, down and up just a little bit. Now, you can do an air squat like this. If you've been doing squats all the time, do it like that. But if you're just getting fit again, you're getting back into mobility. Either you use a cane to get around or you've been out of shape a little bit. And you wanna get back into shape, fighting shape. You wanna be fighting fit. This is gonna help you get there faster because you're assisting your body in this squatting motion. Do this for 30 seconds and feel your heart rate going up. Feel that fire, that fat burning furnace get kicked off as your metabolism goes up. After 30 seconds, put your left foot forward, get in that protective position. I want you to be able to fight him dexterously with both hands, the threat's here, the cane is between you and the threat. You can step in, I like to step in, you can step back. Either way, I want you to make your body a smaller target. I want you to pull most of the, your vital spots away from the attack, turning it. I want you to put your hard, bony arms between you and the threat. And the best thing here is that you also have this stick. Awesome. Good, good for you. Congratulations. We'll call this a bow birthday. From here, step in or step back. Either one is correct, but get that hard stick, that length between you and the threat. You're gonna put it right in his line of sight so he has to work around it to get to you. That's to your advantage. Now from here, again, back here, because I wanna work that big, long strike, that range of motion. I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna start to go faster as I warm up. And you're gonna do every move in this workout, this beginner workout. Just get started right away with your self-defense cane or your fighting cane, 30 seconds. Slow at first, gradually going faster so you start to break a sweat and you start to put some stress on your hands. Not too much, just enough that they get stronger with every single workout. If you use this for self-defense, when you need it, you're going to be so strong so easily. Um, yes, katana, which is metal, would if you bring it straight down, you can slice through. If you come at an angle, if you know how to use a katana, then it's even like that, like that. It's even better, right, that angle. But if you know how to use a bow or a cane, you can deflect. The blade comes this way, your cane comes this way, your bow comes that way, your Joe, your staff. So you're not ever gonna block the blade, you're going to block the side of the blade. Does that make sense? Same thing's true with the knife. You're coming at this angle. He's coming straight into you, trying to get you. You're coming that way. He comes up to your head, you can lift this straight up, See that angle? Block, strike, block, strike. So we're on that left side, 30 seconds there. We go back to the strengthening exercise to get the legs really, really powerful. Yes, three direction. Think of a spiral. Uh, we watch this, this show before we get ready. My kids love this show, they're real little, and they watch it before they go to school in the morning called Avatar, Airbender, right? fun and they're doing all the kung fu and twisting my kids say dad can you teach us how to be an airbender an avatar and i say of course i can who do you think i am that's my whole life i'm teaching you too and that's for fit that's that's for cartoons right that's for fun that's pretend but the principles are all the same it's that wing chun punch the wax on wax off mr miyagi and karate kid 
It's all martial arts. It's the beauty of the martial arts. It's redirection, just like you said. Down and up, you're doing this 30 seconds. Now notice I'm going a little bit lower than I did the first time. It's because I'm warmed up. You're gonna get warmed up, go a little lower, and use your hands just a tiny bit to take a little of the pressure off of your knees. If your knees hurt a little bit, turn your feet out like a duck. The more you turn your feet out, the more that pressure comes off the inside on that knee joint. So if you have any knee pain, feet out like a duck, 30 seconds down and up, your heart rate continues to go up. This whole workout is going up, 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 up. You're going to shed the fat, if you have any. You're going to be leaned out faster, stronger. No matter what, you're building power in those legs for that knockout punch, knockout kick, or that ending, fight ending strike that you're going to do with your cane. Now, the next technique, put your right foot forward again. Bring your hands up. You're going to block. I showed you this a minute ago. From here, anytime you block up, I always get these interruptions. Most people think they're coming down like this, and that's what the high block's for. It's not. It's when it comes straight in. The punch is coming in straight to your nose, and your uh, block is pushing. See what that does? It's coming here. I need a partner, right? Wish you were here. It's coming in here, and you push up. They're punching here, and it blocks them up like this. You're going to bring that hand up and strike, breaking those ribs as hard as you can to end the fight so you get to go home safe. It's about self-defense. So from here, better position. They throw that punch. You intercept with a rising high block. Now look what happens to my cane. I just naturally allow it to look like the roof of a house up north with the snow and it falls. That's why they're like that. So it falls and it slides off. And it doesn't crush the roof. So from here, block, block. You're just bringing it, but it has to come through your center. If you bring it over here, this is what you've done before. I've seen it. You bring it over here, that's not going to work, right? Because the punch is coming in here. You're going to miss it all together. You're going to bring it right through your middle. And even if you're slower than you should be, or your timing is off, which happens to all of us, you're still going to catch it. Even if they're starting to smash, your nose is starting to go into your face, you get it at the last second, you're going to pull it off. Their hand has to go here. Because think about it. All their power is coming here. All their power is going forward, and all of a sudden, you're just, you just need a little bit of force. You bring it up, through, up, through. So just put that right foot forward, block, strike, block, strike. Straight up, down, up, down. 30 seconds here, and then 30 seconds on the other side. Here it is, down here, slow at first. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Get through that full range of motion. Start to speed it up. Up, down, up, down. Two. The other nice thing is you're going to get some good blood, some good plasma, oxygen from the heart and the lungs into the shoulders, which is going to make them feel great and heal anything that's going on in there, making you a lot stronger. Back to the legs, but this time instead of squats, I'm going to put it in one hand. doesn't matter which one. The other hand is up. I'm going to step into a tiny little lunge, front, front. I'm going to start to stabilize the knees, get my legs stronger, because I'm going to teach you how to kick too. Imagine this, they're coming in, you're trying to fight them here, you get you to throw a kick right into their knee, right into the shin, right into the groin, or you can bring it up a little bit higher. I'm not going to go too high, this isn't martial arts uh, taekwondo kicking, this is just you're fighting him here. He's getting too close. You're just going to move him back with a basic front kick. They're coming into the side. He grabs you here, just to the side. Just a little pushing kick. Just a little stomp into his shin, into his foot as he comes up to grab you by behind or from behind, maybe into the groin, right? But that's all that is. So we're going to do from here step lunges. Just for 30 seconds. You don't even have to count them. Four. And again, your heart rate is going where it's going up. Your metabolism is going up. You're lighting that uh, thermogenesis, which is a fancy word for fat burning uh, system, your fat burning fuel, fat burning oven. The little lunge, little lunge. And now I want to get back into this position. Strike here, strike here. Think of making an X. One side of the body and the other side. 
One, two. I want you to do this in this workout today. From your shoulders. One, two. And the reason is this. Let's say, oh, I forgot to mention this. All these, all these things that we're doing can be done from a chair. Whether it's a wheelchair, on the couch, maybe you don't move as well. Um, but it's important to understand this because you might be sitting at the bus stop. You might be sitting at the train station. You might be sitting on the train and you're here. And all you have for self-protection is the walking cane. All you have for self-protection, self-defense, is a self-defense fighting cane. Someone's coming up, getting too close. You can strike multiple directions, get yourself up, throw a kick, and then you're back in the fight. You're back on your feet. But the point is, all of it can be done also in that seated position. I know my shirt's popping out. All right, that's what happens when I get excited. I love the cane. From here, one, two. I'm just coming from over the shoulder. If I'm sit, if I have a low ceiling, this, I'm gonna run in, it's up there somewhere. I don't wanna hit the ceiling too much. I hit it with my bow all the time. But the ceiling is low. Look at that, it's the same exact strike. It's just as powerful, just as devastating, just as fight stopping for self-defense. And I don't need any overhead room. It's coming forward through that same arc that we started with. So I want you to practice, slow at first, gradually increasing speed until the last 10 seconds of that 30 second set, full speed, full power, as hard as you can to train your body and your brain to get together on what it feels like to truly defend yourself. Slow with the other side. And always get in that better position from here. Try to visualize it, right? Practice in your mind the principles of self-defense, situational awareness, pay attention what's happening right now around you, close and across the street, down the hallway. Situation awareness number two, get in that better position. Put the stick between me and the threat. See this? I want it to be in your line of sight so you can't see my face. You're gonna have to come around my cane. To try to hit me, stab me, kick me, slap me, grab me. You have to get around my force multiplier. My big, strong, thick, break your bones, get out of my face tool, self-defense tool. That's why it's one of the best, most effective self-defense tools you can find because you can take it with you everywhere you go. And essentially it's a big stick over here and on here, there's that hook. Grab them here, come through the face, come through the other side, maybe from here, come grab that leg, jerk them in between the legs. There's a lot of crazy, mean, nasty things you can do with strikes, with grabs and pulls. And then, of course, there are all the joint locks, pressure points, come along techniques that we talk about later. But this is about getting started right now. Today, you've got your cane. Get it into that hand. Make yourself a smaller target. Strike, strike. The two X's, gradually increasing your speed harder, faster, harder, faster. Until you're really feeling it. You're breaking the sweat. You're leaning out faster. You're building muscle. Your bones are getting more dense. You're improving your well-being, the quality of your life because you get more flexibility, more strength, more endurance. It's really important. What if you know all the techniques, but you have no endurance, you can't last in the fight. Put it in the other hand. This time, instead of a forward lunge, I'm gonna step back and down. So go back, down just a little bit, hands up. Make that a good habit. Always guard your operating system. So I'm going back and down, back and down, and it's really firing these muscles in the front of the legs, the quadriceps, and that's also gonna stabilize your knee joint, getting you stronger, healthier, and because you're assisting with cane, you can do more. And the more you do, the more you're gonna be able to do. You're also gonna feel this on the glutes, on the outside, stabilizing the hips, getting you stronger and healthier. 30 seconds here, and back into your position. Now, add that block up, strike down, strike down, strike up, strike up, bring it through, and bring it back. So we're adding two more strikes. Start with a block, strike, strike, up, up, through the middle, and back. From here, downward to the shoulder, downward, keep it tight, turn your palm to face the sky, as you come up. If you don't turn your palm to face the sky when you run into his body, 
as he's trying to take his, your cane from you, it's going to peel right out of your fingers. If your palm is turned facing the sky, you run into him as you get ready to just obliterate him for self-defense because you have every right to defend yourself. Just It's not going anywhere. It's not coming out. So from here, you're going to start in this position. There it is. I want to interrupt your line of sight so you can't see me. It's pattern interrupt. Block. Remember this nice angle. Down. Two, three, four, five, six. Let's add one. Right here, straight down the middle. As hard and as fast as you can. Block. Strike. Strike. Up. Up. Through. Back. Down. And uh, strike. Block. Sorry. Forgot where I was started. Three, four, five, six. Seven, block, down, down, up, up, through, back, down, switch the feet, block up, through, one side and the other side. There's your X down, here comes the X up. And then you're coming palm up, palm down, comes back, over the head, straight down the middle. Just right there, right? You just turn off their computer, boom, they're out. Let the cops come, scoop them up, take them off because you're not supposed to be there. What's problematic about it? From here, block, down, down. Yeah, these strikes, there are two uh, main influences, from my experience, in cane. The first is Hapkido. Hapkido is a fancy word for jiu-jitsu. Um, yeah, we'll talk about, I'll answer your question about the judge and jury, about the head strikes. Um, although you saw that thug protester in New York on the bridge a few months ago or a month and a half ago, she took her cane and she cracked a couple of cops right down the middle and they just let her out the same day. Uh, today, after this one, after this is Bo. And then if there's time, it's Joe. That's the uh, shorter uh, staff. Uh, and then if there's time, we're going to Kali. And then if there's time, I'm going to pick up some sandbags and throw them back and forth and show you how to get really strong using things you might have around your house. Anyway, yeah, so it works. It's very effective. Back to um, the, the block and the strike, strike, up, up, across, back, and down. That's where we're practicing. And Hapkido Kane was kind of the beginning. And if you look at Master Mark Shuey, Grandmaster Shuey, uh, pioneer. He's the pioneer of self-defense Kane. Grandmaster Mark Shuey is the guy who came up, and he's not the only one that's done it, but he built, he built this whole genre. Uh, it existed, but he codified it. He turned it into a system and has a lot of great things. Kane Fu is another system, so you can find it in the, uh, the Kane and Kung Fu. Obviously, Kane Fu, right? But um, the other style, and maybe you've seen... Uh, Joe Robena, I think is his, his name and how you pronounce it. Um, and I, if he's a master, a master Robena, I'll, get, just call it, I'll call him Guru because it's obvious that his style is Arnis or Scream Akali, Salat, whatever you want to call it. The FMA, Filipino Martial Arts. So yes, there is a huge influence of multiple styles now in the game, but that's why it's so great because, and I like, let me tell you this, I know all of the, not all of them, I know a whole bunch of joint locks, pressure points, come along techniques to do with this thing right here, especially with the hook and with the fact that this is a nice stick and I'm going to get your arm in there and I'm going to crank down on those nerves and it's going to fire you up and you'll be like, ah, like that, or bring it across into that mandibular joint and, ah, you know, or bring it up here, roll this up here and I'm going to, and I can do all that and I can teach you all that. But today, you get the cane today, tomorrow, next week. You want to feel more confident that you can walk around, that you can get out in your world and not be pushed around, have your rights taken from you by some thugs, a uh, group of thugs maybe, by bad people who try to take away what you own, either your dignity, your life, or your stuff. And so you get this cane because you know you can take this anywhere you go. That's why it's the most effective self-defense tool. So you want to get started right away. You don't have five to 10 years working with a partner to get really good at all of these come along techniques, which do work. It's just like um, Aikido. We could go, unless you're Steven Seagal in the movies, the Aikido is not gonna be that effective on the street. 
certain parts of it are, but um, we, want to, we want to get down and dirty. I want to show you how to throw a couple punches, get out of the way. I want to show you how to block a little bit, cover up, bob and weave, move your body, throw some hands, throw some elbows, throw some knees, show you how to stop them from taking you down with a little sprawl, how to drop some elbows, how to get out of the guard or get into the guard, how to cover up, how to roll somebody off of you, pop back up onto your feet. That's what I would teach you if you came to me for practical self-defense. We're not getting into the old Hapkido stuff. That stuff works and it's awesome when you work with a partner who also knows it and they know how to roll, and they know how to take a fall. That's the first thing you learn in uh, jujitsu, old style, jujitsu, judo, Hapkido classes is how to take a fall. Cause then, cause you gotta be a good partner and you can't get hurt, right? So that's not what this is. If you came to me for practical self-defense and you said to me, look, I'm going on vacation, taking my wife and kids or my husband and my kids or whatever, and I want to be able to protect us and them. I've got one day to come to a class. What are you going to teach me? We're not even going to break a sweat probably. We're going to talk about situational awareness. We're going to talk about getting into a better position. We're going to talk about targets, eyes, nose, mouth, throat, solar plexus, things that you can remove or destroy. Then we're going to talk about what tools do you already have? Take that elbow and drive it through the throat. Take that thumb, stick it in that eye. Take your thumb, put it right here, get them off of you. Turn your, he's choking you, turn your head so you can breathe. And then stick your thumb, basic stuff. Nothing fancy, everything that works, that's it. Because I know you're not, you're not gonna remember you know, all of the, the, the joint locks, pressure points, take down, all that stuff. Or even the, you know, how to jitsu them a little bit. All great martial arts, nothing wrong with any of them. It's just not the application we're going for. I got a big stick in my hand. I want to know how to put my stick between me and the threat. Then I ask myself, what are my targets? His eyes. I want to remove his ability to see me, his ability to breathe temporarily. I'm going to take this and smash it right in his face, push him back, or maybe his ability to breathe permanently. I'm going for the throat. I'm going for the throat for self-defense. That's what I want you to learn from day one with your cane. And then all the other stuff is really cool. So you said it was Kali, or, or I think you said a scream or niece. Absolutely right. It's also some, all those years of sword and uh, kindo whoo, and yaido, you know? So there's a lot of influence in there. It's all, it's all, but that's the point of martial arts. It's all in the same world. Oh, thank you so much, DZ. Much appreciated, much love. That helps me out, helps me make these videos when you guys do that, when you make those stickers, you make those contributions to the cause, as it were. Wait till you see what I got coming. I don't know how long it's gonna take me, but it's, it's, gonna, it's knocking my socks off. See, literally. Anyway, but you guys are helping me get there. This is a community. This is our international global virtual dojo. All right, so back to techniques. And then I'll talk about what happens in court. If you go, let's say you took a baseball bat out, or they call them a th th tire thumper, or one of these, let me get it real quick. One of these. A lot of people feel like the craziness these days, they got to carry an expandable baton. And then you can buy these on Amazon. And I saw it today. It was suggested in my feed on Amazon. It said, uh, hot item, tire thumper, window breaker, because it's got this thing here. So they can classify it as a window breaker. So you go into the canal down here in Florida. There are canals everywhere. People roll their cars in the canal and they, they, they die because the water comes in. They can't get out because it's too heavy to get the door open. And they can't break the window. There's your window breaker. And that's what they're sold, or they're sold as a tire thumper. Like a truck, like you're an 18-wheel trucker, truck driver, some of you are. And you're going around thumping it with your thumper. No, that's not what this is. This is a weapon. It's a, not a very effective weapon. I asked my uh, police officer, a friend and student, just last week. I said, Do you, does your department carry these? He said, yes. But no one in the entire department will ever take it out because of liability reasons. Even the police officer, well, especially now, right? But they won't even use them because you take this out and go to court with this, even if it's purely self-defense and they had the videos everywhere, then they say, well, why did he leave the house with it? What was in his intention? Why, why was she carrying it? She must have been looking for a fight if she, if she was carrying a deadly weapon, which is also illegal. You're not even allowed to carry it. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but every other, every other weapon falls in this category. I could show you all of them. I've got them all there. 
You carry a sword, super obvious. Yeah. You carry a steel whip, what's that for? A blackjack, if you guys know what a blackjack is, some of you guys do. Um, and you can still, and, and it's funny, you, if you go and you look, you can't find blackjack on Amazon, but if you put in tire thumper, you'll find a whole bunch of blackjacks. And they call them other things too. But that's what they are, they're weapons, right? You carry any weapon, that shows intent, that you have the intent to cause the situation to happen. So you're at least equally liable. So if somebody's going to jail, you might both be going to jail. If you're walking around, and this is, this is especially true in the United States and most Western countries, the Americans with Disabilities Act, that's only here, but most countries have laws like that. Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, says you cannot, any, you being anybody, can't ask me to prove that I need to carry this, that I'm allowed to carry this, that I'm legal, that it's legal for me to carry this, as long as it has this hook and it doesn't have any points. So you'll see some of them, they've got like a super sharp point there. If it penetrates, illegal. If it looks like that, not illegal to carry, but um, you, if you go to court, you're in trouble. Some of them have a little bit of a chiseled tip. Now that's a little bit more questionable, but not illegal because it doesn't penetrate. It's not as sharp. You carry this or a version of it. This, because of the hook, is a, uh, uh, it's a medical, considered a medical device. It's your right to carry it. No one has to make you prove that you need it. They can't do that on the street. The cops can't ca stop you and say, hey, why do you have that cane? It doesn't look like you need a limp or you have a limp or whatever. They can't prove that you need it, right? And the second thing, <laughs> yeah, uh, Master, Master Hernandez, he can also speak really well to, he knows this better than I do. If, um, if you haven't started following his channel, by the way, he's, he's on the chat, click his little thing, go to his channel or type in uh, Master Gary Hernandez. Kane, he'll tell you all about what's legal and what's not legal. But the point is, if you are using some of these techniques to defend yourself and you're not going to look like Jackie Chan, uh, Jet Li, Bruce Lee, uh, Chuck Norris or whatever, you're not going to look like some, you're not going to be like the swashbuckler doing this. You probably won't look like that. You'll look like... And that's it. And then they look at that and they say, well, you know, that guy was walking down the street. He put his hands up. He was non-threatening. See, his hand was open. If you go like this, <laughs> they can say threatening. If you go like this, non-threatening. His hands were open. He said, stop. He said, back up. He said, I have every right to defend myself. You don't have to like me, but you can't touch me. You said it. You don't have to like who I am, where I've come from, what I believe, how I live my life. You have no right to take what's mine, my dignity, my life, the dignity or the life of the people I care for, my children, my wife, my husband, whatever. You have every right to do that, to defend yourself. Then you're in a position like this. You happen to go down like that because you said that was what was iffy, right? In the court of law. No, it's purely self-defense. Almost every time before it even gets to, unless they make it political, but before it gets to court, some prosecutor is going to say, we can't prosecute on that. And they're going to throw it out. But that's, that's the point. That's why we do these techniques. That's why it's the most effective self-defense tool in the world. All right, so from here, step in, block, strike, step up, strike, step back, strike. Bring it over your shoulder and to the other hand. Don't worry that this big knuckle, this big hammer is on the other side. That's to your advantage, right? But you're gonna, from here, you're gonna block, strike, step up, strike. Now, why step up? Because if they're coming in here to tackle, if they're coming in here to stick you with a knife, they're coming in here or coming here to punch you this way, you don't want one foot back. You don't have as much balance. You're gonna stand up and square off. Now the attack's coming here. You're gonna strike this way. Imagine the attack is behind, strike back. Bring it around that shoulder from here, block, strike, strike back bring it around the shoulder block strike strike back all we're doing now all you're doing now is a fighting set to disguise repetition so you can do these techniques over and over and over again so you get burned into your muscle memory and when you need it it's right there it's coming out of you so from here start with in the right hand if you like left hand if you like the beauty about these fighting sets is it's ambidextrous you do the same thing on side to side uh, it depends on which ones you get. If you get the ones from Century, yes, I sand all mine down. I sand all that stuff off so I can start getting the oil from my hand into the staff. 
And then if you don't spin it enough to get that oil into the staff, then get yourself some mineral oil or cottonseed oil. And, and you're gonna get one of these because they only sell them like this. Big one, and it's gonna last you the rest of your life. But uh, I learned this, I forgot all about this. I knew about this from when I was a kid. Yeah, Master Hernandez and I are gonna laugh again because we, we know the, uh, the blackjack. We also had shop class. And in shop class, after you oil things with that rag, if you ball it up and you stick it, this is what burns down a lot of houses still to this day. People do stuff in their basement, they ball it up and they stick it in the corner. It's got that oil in there, it's combustible. It's a bomb, time bomb, waiting to burn their house down. And then it gets too close, that uh, water heater kicks on, pew, furnace kicks on, pew, boom. So don't ball it up. You always lay it flat, let it dry, and then put it away. That was just a quick tip for the linseed oil. All right, anyway, I digress too much. Let's finish up. Step into your protected position, block your head at this angle, strike down, bring your feet up under your body so that you can turn the attack here to defend yourself, look behind your shoulder, right eye to the right shoulder, step back and strike. Bring, let the right hand come off, the left hand now comes through, so it's in the front, block up, strike, step in, strike, step back, strike. By the end of this week, we're gonna add kicks to this basic fighting set. Is this how you're gonna defend yourself on the street in a real fight? No. You might use some of these techniques. Well, why are we practicing the form? It's to disguise repetition, to get balance, speed, power. Remember, longevity means flexibility, strength, endurance, and mobility. This is gonna help you with the mobility. So from here around, block, strike. To the side, step back around, Block. I think I did that one differently, but you get the idea, right? Side to side. Let me show you one more time. I'll keep it clean since I made the mistake. And by the way, I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> if you're watching for my mistakes and you find any, please put them in the comment section below. We'll all go viral because I have so many. Uh, and YouTube loves all the comments, right? So from here, block, strike, step up, strike, step back, strike. And... I don't always know the answer. That's why I appreciate people like Master Gary Hernandez coming by because he can, um, he can clean me up. He can say, no, nah, that's not right. This is right. And then we all learn from each other. It's a community. We step in, block, strike, step up, strike, step back, strike around the shoulder, down, block, strike, in, back, around the shoulder, block, strike. I just wanted to add this high block this week. And remember, the high block is not when someone's chopping down in your head, blocking up like this. It's when someone's punching you straight in your eyeball that you push their hand up, breaking those ribs. You're going to break them. From here, for self-defense, you knock their hand up, boom, in, back. Bring it around, get ready, block, strike, through, and back. That's what I have. Oh, I'm not done. I have one more because you asked me. I have two more because you asked me. Now, I'm gonna give you the serious one first and the fun one second. It's serious, but it's serious fun. All right, so you get your band. I know some of you have the bands. This is to improve your strength so you live a better life. You have more power to knock someone off. One of my favorite techniques is if they're too close, you bring this between you and them and just jam them straight back. So to get stronger there, canes in front of your body, you whip that around, just grab it behind you, bring it back around. And then, by the way, I haven't fixed my uniform yet. Do you know when you're supposed to do that in a class? It's not while I'm still teaching. It's at the end. I don't know when I say turn around and fix your suit. But don't get distracted, especially when you defend yourself. You just push that thing out and you pull it back. See where it is? Just over my arms and my shoulders. It's just like a slow push-up. Now... If you keep tension on the muscle all the way by not bringing it in and resting, so you're going to bring it almost all the way in, almost all the way out, and then in, out, time under tension, you're going to start to change the quality of the muscle. You're going to get younger muscle. You're going to get stronger, faster, more explosive muscle. Just out and in, and instead of thinking about a number of sets, you're going for time under tension. Yes. In these days of COVID, 
Some people would be very frightened by that. Good point. Out and in. 30 seconds there. Then rest for 30 seconds. Second set. Go down like you're lifting yourself up out of the pool. You're going down, in, down, in, to the state of Florida and where we are right now are the local laws are as long as I'm working out, I don't have to wear a mask. That's why I walk around the grocery store chewing on carrots. Because as long as you're eating, you don't have to wear that's That's not true. I don't do that. I thought about it and I thought, well, just put your mask on. Don't be so difficult. Your kids are watching. Not that I'm a rule follower, because I'm not. But uh, why cause unnecessary <laughs> tension? Because other people are really freaked out. And I'm going to honor that a little bit. But not to the point where I'm going to allow their fear to trump my, uh, my freedoms and my rights. There's a, there's a limit. Some things are worth fighting for. Don't ever, rem or don't ever forget that, because people get that one messed up all the time. Some people are always like, oh, well, we, 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 we can't make a fuss. We can't stand up. You know, let, turn the other cheek. Yes, let them hit the other cheek. Turn the other cheek. I'm not saying that that's wrong. That there are places, there's a place and a time for that. But think about like the 9 11. Some of you guys remember 9 11 too. You still remember where you were and what happened and how that went down. We're going up to work the upper part of the chest. And when 9 11 came, up until that point, they told us if any hijackers get on your plane, just don't do anything. Don't fight back because they'll land, they'll get their ransom, and then they'll be gone. Everybody will be fine. Don't speak up. Don't fight back. And then they flew the building or the planes into the buildings. And then there was that one plane that went down in the field and they had that, the phone call from the, that old boy who was on there talking to his wife. And he said, I, I, we, we saw what's happening. They're going to fly this thing into the White House or something. We're not going to let that happen. And then the last thing they heard was what? Let's roll. And then they went to the front and then, you know, and tragic, no matter what, tragic ending. But they, they, at least they fought for something, right? Sometimes that's the point. When it comes to your life, your dignity, your rights, the freedom of your family, some things are worth fighting for. Just learn how to fight right. Don't just be a blabbermouth where you're blabbing. Yeah, I know. I, I'm digressing again. So we're pushing up. Now, from there, so I've, I've worked the chest, right? And I want you to see one more because we started this last week. And from here, you're going to push straight out. Now, this does not go down. This is not a downward tricep extension. This is a tricep extension. But the way this works is the elbows stay super tight. I'm going to push from my forehead in a straight line out. So from here, I'm going out this way. And you're going to feel, especially with this purple band, if you've got the, these bands, you're going to fire that up. You're going to get strong, fast, bam, snap back, knockout muscles, right? Get out of my face, muscles. I will defend myself. It's my right. Get away from my family. Anything that threatens you or threatens your family, you learn how to threaten it back. That's what we're saying for self-defense. All right. Laziness. If it's laziness, threaten it back. If it's uh, greed, if it's consumerism or commercialism, you put it under your hips, push your hips back and curl. Three. But in practical ways. Some man, some woman, a group of thugs, they come, invade your home, invade your space. Be prepared to defend yourself. That's what we're here for. This is for the upper arm. And I do that not for a certain number, but for 30 seconds. Now I'm going to turn my hand over, palms down, so I can work the top part of this forearm. Get that super big and strong. 30 seconds here. Time under tension. And then I'm going to take my third set after I rest. Sometimes they're not going to come. That was the other thing that I heard last week. A lot of times because of COVID and because of the political environment that these guys are having to deal with right now, they're being selective when they come. And sometimes you keep hearing these stories, someone tells them, don't respond. Or when they get there, they tell them, don't get involved. And I'm not trying to be doom and gloom because I'm not, but better to prepare and not need it. And the side effect will be your whole life is better because you're stronger, more fit, all that stuff. But prepare so you don't have to panic. Final exercise. This has nothing to do with self-defense. This is simply because you asked me, can I do the ob ante spin with the cane? Me, you, meaning you. Can you do it? Yes. 
you're gonna start with this outer spin behind your back. See what I'm doing? Outer spin behind my back. It's called an outer orbital. And then I've got an inner orbital. These are great ways to strengthen your wrist, by the way. So now I'm spinning inside and I put it together, out and in. That's just a figure eight. That's this motion here, figure eight. And I know we haven't done this in very many workouts. I'm saving it until a little bit later because from the very beginning, I want you to know someone gets in your face, put your hands here, push, get them out of your face. I want you to know to make a, a smaller target and strike. Don't let them get close enough to hit you with that knife. I want you to know those basics first, right? I want you to know how to do a rifle, butt, or a bayonet strike. Those things, to the side, to the side. Stepping in, stepping back, hit this guy, hit that guy. Simple ways. This kind of stuff, swashbuckling, uh, pirate fighting, that's cool stuff. But that's not what we're working on yet. But you asked me, OB any spin. I'm not even going to tell you where it's from. Some of you know, some of you are like, what? You can Google it. So you're going around, your hand stays closed. This is cheating. This is a bad idea because when you hit anything, that cane's coming out of your hand. Keep your hand closed and improve the flexibility in that wrist. So you're going to go behind your back like this, and then you're going to turn your hand down like you're coming in for that figure eight. But instead of coming in, you're going to put it behind your back and it's going to go straight up. Straight up your spine, like a tree growing out of your, your uh, bum crack. Okay? So from here, I go one, drop it, and then I'm going to whip that elbow out. This is also a uh, plum blossom, peach blossom from Kung Fu. If, you, if I had the Tao, like the Mulan sword, that movie's coming out, or that TV show or whatever it is coming out on Disney, Mulan, she's going to do this spin. And that's all it is. It's the outer orbital behind your back, whip the elbow out. This is a blocking motion. Bring it around and bring it down. Yes, I will try. Um, the problem is just that my schedule's so fragmented. It's all over the place right now. As I get going throughout this school year, I hope, it gets more set. Right now, it's super fragmented. And so I just do these when I have a minute or 10 minutes however long this one's gone on and I super I really appreciate you guys being here um, doing this stuff with me but again and this is too, it's totally frivolous the side effect is you're gonna be super flexible you're gonna be strong in your wrist you're gonna know how to do some cool stuff it might interest you it might be fun so I'm not discounting this technique altogether I'm just saying you're not gonna use it for self-defense but from here but you know what it's like a boxer jump stroke like this this is conditioning the body I don't think you're going to use this in the fight either. It's, for me, it's too much live, it's too much risk. I run into somebody while I'm spinning, and I know I can, I can practice striking that way, but I don't want you to do it because I know if you, run, if you do it wrong and that goes flying out of your hand, all of a sudden you've got your hand against him, against his knife. I'd rather you have that stick still. That's why I want you to do this. But the Obiani, I do one spin. It's one orbital behind my back, and then I drop the stick. And then I pull, there's that one, two, one, two. And the key is that it's got to come up here. Almost everybody that gets stuck on this move, it's because they don't get it straight up. Whip the elbow out, turn it, drop it, pull it, one. And of course, if you do it with one hand, make sure you can always do it with the other hand. The only thing to think about is this. It, um, I think instinctively I'm putting it in the right spot so that I don't get it stuck on my body or my clothes. You might not see that right away. You might not do that uh, instinctively yet. So make sure that it's just um, in line like you would have it here, just straight out. And if you do it like that, then it becomes like a broadsword, like a Chinese broadsword. Um, I don't, I have a, a couple of dials here, but I don't have the Chinese broadsword but these are, all, these are all moves from Kung Fu. This is blocking, and they permeate other styles too. Um, if you don't know how to fight with a machete, that's one of my favorites too. It's the same kind of thing. Yes, I'll get a drink of water, I'll bite a little bit to eat, 
and I'll probably be back in about five to ten minutes with the staff. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thanks so much.